Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Midday CX Spark. Uh, every single Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, sometimes we'll have some extra specials in here, and you never know when they may come. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to share with you some insights and expertise to help you ignite that CX celebration, not just today, but all year long. And that is the spirit of Customer Service Week. It's not just a week. It's a way of doing business. It's a way of being. And today we have Chip Bell, who is a senior contributor with the Customer Service Weekly, on with us today for our Midday CX Spark. Now, Chip is also a prolific speaker and author, and he has actually written his 24th book, which is about getting into your customer's imagination. And Chip's going to share with you the subtitle and why that's important. Chip, welcome. Thanks, Jim. Always fun to be with you. Man, I'll tell you. Uh, and talking about fun, I always do enjoy our conversation. Oh, well, let's make it sparkle. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Matter of fact, I think that was another book, wasn't it? Uh, Sprinkles. Sprinkles. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Sprinkles was uh, two books back. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, well, and we're also going to be having Chip as a guest on the Fast Leader Show podcast, and we're going to have a little bit more of a dialogue and discussion about uh, his new book. But today, because we're talking about a midday spark, uh, we're only going to have a few minutes with Chip uh, really to energize you, to give you that extra uh, fire to go ahead and mo get moving. But Chip, if you could tell us a little bit about really the, the, the concepts that you have created uh, for this particular book and why it's so important. Well, uh, I, we all know, every organization knows that if they're going to be successful and survive, they got to continually innovate. They got to come out with new product services, solutions, and typically what they do is turn to their R&D, their research and development unit for that, or sometimes they look at best practices in their industry. But you and I are big customer people. We say, why not talk to the customer? Because oftentimes the customer has a lot of cool ideas that maybe you didn't think of. For example, you know, Starbucks didn't come up with splash sticks. Their customers did. Uh, a cake pops, you know, that wasn't a Starbucks idea. That was customer's idea or pumpkin spice latte, my favorite, or, the, or how about having a Wi-Fi in all their stores? Uh, that's all about the customer and getting the customer involved yeah, with their imagination. But there's a challenge with that. And that is, you know, when we ask you to come dream with me, come, come up with crazy ideas, unique things, sometimes it's a little risky. Customers don't just go come to, into our organizations with weird ideas, a few may, but most uh, kind of reserved about giving us crazy off the wall, half baked ideas. And so how do you create an opportunity and a sense of freedom and security? So they're willing to share those crazy ideas and together co-create, collaborate uh, on new products, services, and solutions. So the book's about how to do that. Well, and you also wrote an, a really uh, an article I love that's on the customerserviceweekly.org website, which is about let your customers lick the beaters. And, you know, being a kid, I mean, that creates fond memories. And, and for me, I think that's really what you're kind of talking about here is being able to take that type of connection yes. with customers. Yes, people care when they share. And so how do I get my customers to share with me? Like what we did when we were kids with our parents or mom, mom or dad making a pet cake. You know, when we got to lick the beaters, we got to be a part of that whole uh, creation process. And, you know, you, you felt your fingerprints were on that cake. I made that. I helped make it. Uh, and I think when we do that, uh, we build a deeper sense of loyalty. You know, I got a friend of mine uh, who runs a liquor store. Now, I don't go there often, uh, Jim, not often, but I've been known to go there. And uh, he does a cool thing. Some time ago, he wanted to create a unique uh, brand of uh, bourbon. I, I'm a Jack Daniels drinker, but he, so we got a Kentucky brewery to make, a, uh, to make him uh, five different flavors. And uh, then he had to pick which one he was going to have as his signature brand to sell in his store. Well, um, he asked his customers to come in and taste test, pick out the one they liked, and that's the one he chose. But the magic thing happened. He just sold hundreds of bottles in just a few days. People who didn't even drink bourbon uh, would buy them for their friends who did uh, because, well, I helped make it. It's, you know, I co-created it. So it built a deep sense of loyalty in his customers. And the cool thing about that. He's now on his fifth brand with that same process. And again, it's how do we get our customers involved in a way that they feel a sense of loyalty to our organization because they're partners. And the whole book is about how to create that kind of partnership with your customers so they're, they feel comfortable and safe in sharing those off-the-wall ideas. 
Well, I mean, I love the message and we do have examples of this that you can cite and things like that. However, when, but when we start talking about for many of us, our frontline staff folks who are the ones who have to be the ones who are, you know, orchestrating all of this and encouraging and persuading and, and engaging with all of that, oftentimes they're not given that as something to focus on. It's like, hey, I've got a job to accomplish. I've got things to do. I've got transactions to handle and things like that. How do we change that behavior? Yeah, which is in many ways sad because they, they're the most brilliant, you know, and the reason they're most brilliant is for two reasons. They're the ambassador, right? And they know the customer better than anybody because they interact with them all the time. And so why wouldn't we capitalize on that brilliance? And I think the organizations who do are ones that create uh, the, the front line who's resourced, who's staffed, who's uh, trained and empowered, trusted, essentially, uh, to make those calls. You know, when you look at those organizations that we know of that are really, really great at delivering world-class customer experiences, and then you talk to their front line, you know, they feel like they sort of own the place. They, they have a lot of freedom to do that, and they and they feel like they're help, help managed in a way that um, their their partners. I always say, you know, treat your employees like your most important customers, and it's amazing what will happen when that when that occurs. So I think it's the leader who's willing to say, I want to equip you to be in a position so you can help encourage that customer to co-create. There's always an opportunity to say, you know, what's something nobody's ever done, you know, or what's one way we could improve how we do that service. That sometimes doesn't take but a second. And, uh, and one idea, you know, that kind of thing. And it doesn't interfere with all the metrics that we seem to feel like we've got to run uh, to run a call center, for example. We don't run the concierge like that. It's interesting, isn't it? That's a very, that's a very interesting point. And I want to make sure that, um, you know, those of you who are watching and maybe even listening to this, that, you know, it's your opportunity to get more insights like this from senior contributors and contributors to the customer service weekly dot org uh, blog and podcast by going and getting a membership. We have two free memberships available. One is just a basic membership where you can get a weekly notification. And another one is what we call our CX Spark, where you can get more notifications about insights like this. And also you wanna actually read the article that Chip uh, contributed in regards to let the customers lick the beaters as well. Now, Chip, when we start talking about some of the metrics, you mentioned them, uh, that we use in order to be able to help you know, to manage, um, help, you know, guide, help to coach, all of those things. A lot of times we don't have the metrics that we need in order to do that. So in other words, we have recommend, uh, we have customer effort, um, we have satisfaction, we have all these different measures and metrics, but you're talking about, you're really talking about imagination. Why imagination? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. It's one of my favorite questions. Um, I think it's important because, um, you know, our, our probably our most popular, let's call it customer loyalty metric now is the uh, NPR, the net promoter score. And um, Dr. Fred, Fred Reichel created at uh, Bain. And, and a lot of organizations use it. Would you recommend to a family member or friend? The ultimate question, he calls it. I think, I think it's, a, it's a great wake up call for organizations that use it. But the challenge is it's asking the customer, would you recommend? And I think there's a level higher than that. And my work is all about that higher level. And it's a lot higher when you say, instead of, would you recommend? It's a story. You ain't going to believe what happened to me. And then they tell a story. Well, people can't wait to try that out when I hear a story about it. So what does it take to create an experience that people can't wait to story? What, what does that take? And it takes imagination. It takes innovation. It takes looking at the unique things that happen. My wife has a new car, traded in her old car, and a week after she had her car, she turned out on the radio for the very first time and discovered they had programmed in her radio stations from her trade-in. Now, what do you think she talks about, the car or the radio? She talks about that radio. And she has sold a lot of cars of that brand to her friends who go, you know, I got to go there. I got to go there because I got to check that out. You know, it's thinking differently. And and uh, and I think what I call value unique service, not just value added, that's to me the, the path to the ultimate advocate uh, because they feel like something different and unique. We don't talk or tweet about good service anymore, but when it's out of the ordinary, you know, that, that does make a difference. And that's what my writing's been around. 
about, and the, this new book, Inside Your Customer's Imagination, is a continuation of that same vein, creating that value unique experience for your customer. Well, definitely it is something that is well worth reading. And you have five, uh, your subtitle talks about five things associated with this. Can you get Right. I call it five secrets to breakthrough product services and solutions. And those five things came from looking at the most innovative organizations that we all know. You know, if you ask somebody, they'd say, well, Pixar, Pictures or Google or Amazon or companies like that that do a lot of innovative things. And if you go inside their culture and go, okay, what are the features of their culture? You'll find at least five things present. They're highly curious. That's one of the secrets. Um, they are very grounded, very focused on what they're about. Another secret. Uh, they're also focused on risk-taking that results in growth, on learning. Um, it's measured. It's appropriate risk-taking. I call it discovery. Finally, they're very trusting uh, environments. They create safety and, and drive fear out of the workplace, as Deming said. And finally, they're all about passion. They're all about energizing, get people excited about what they do. Well, I got to thinking, what if you took those five secrets, um, curiosity, grounding, discovery, trust, and passion, and applied them to a relationship, in this case, a customer relationship, what would that look like? And how do you do that? And so obviously it's in the context of creating a partnership. So again, they feel comfortable and safe in co-creating collaboratively with you to create a new, a new product. Well, and we'll definitely get more into that when we have our interview on the Fast right. the podcast. Also, uh, like I had mentioned, Chip is a regular contributor, a senior contributor to the customerserviceweekly.org website. So make sure that you visit his content because it will give you that midday as well as all day CX Spark. Chip, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Jim. Always a good time.